Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by IITNs. In this video, we will discuss some questions and the basic concept regarding the greatest integer functions. So let's start with this video. So first, what is a greatest integer function? So if we define a greatest integer function, it is a greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. Let's suppose the symbol for the greatest integer function is this. So if I am writing greatest integer of 3.7, that means it will give you a greatest integer that is less than or equal to 3.7. So if I write it like this, so it is equal to, wait a moment, yeah, so it is equal to the greatest integer that is less than or equal to 3.7, that means 3. Similarly, if I write what is the greatest integer function for 0 0.79, you can see that the greatest integer that is less than this particular number 7, 0 0.79 is 0 itself. So 0 will be the greatest integer for this. Now let's see what is the greatest integer for a negative number. So if you have a negative number, let's suppose negative 2.7. You know that the greatest integer will give you a least number than the particular value of the x given here. So the number is 2.7 that is negative and if you want a number that is less than this particular number but that is an integer so it will give you negative 3 itself. So you can see negative 3 is less than 2 points, negative 2.7 so this is the answer. These are the greatest integer values when you have a fractional number but if you have a perfectly integer number and then the greatest value greatest integer of that particular integer value let's suppose 3. So the greatest well integer value of 3 will be 3 itself means if you put a integer inside the greatest integer symbol it will give you that integer but if you put a fractional number then it will give you a num a integer number that is less than that fractional number okay so this is the uh, this is all about the greatest integer function now let's see how we can actually draw the graph of a greatest integer function so before going to the fractional part let's draw the graph Okay, let me clear the screen. As we have understood the, the concept of greatest integer function that in, in a particular range, what is the value of greatest integer? Because for different same values of x, uh, for different values of x, the greatest integer can have the same value. What I mean by that is that if you have a x that is greater than or equal to 0, but less than 1 means if the value of x is in between 0 and 1, then the greatest integer of x will always be equal to 0. You can put greatest integer of 0, it will be 0, or greatest integer of 0 0.7, this will also be 0. Then if you put what is the greatest integer of 0 0.999, you are very near to the 1, it's still this will be 0. That means for any value of x in the range 0 to 1, you will always get a greatest integer value 0. Similarly, if you find what is the greatest integer for a value of x lying between 1 and 2, you can see that if you have a value of x between 1 and 2, it will always give you an integer value and that is equal to 1. So the greatest integer for all values of x lying in this particular range will be 1. If you find what is the greatest integer of 1, it is 1. What is the greatest integer of 1.2? This is also 1. What is the greatest integer value of 1.97 or 79? It is also 1. So you have a range of values lying between two integers, 1 and 2. It will always give you an integer that is equal to the least integer, that is the 1. Similarly, for 0 to 1 range, it is always giving you an integer value 0. Let's see what will be the case when you have a negative range of values. I am clearing this screen. I can make a table actually. So the table is, this is the range of, uh, okay, let's write it a range. So these are the range of values of x and these are the second column is the greatest integer of x. So the second column will be 0 when you have the range between 0 to 1. And when you have range between 1 and 2, it will always be 1. Now let's suppose what is the negative range. It means when x is lying between negative 1 and 0 or x is lying between negative 2 
and negative 1. So if you are you have a value of x between negative 1 and 0, you can see that x will uh, be a uh, negative number and if the uh, greatest integer value of that number is calculated, it will give you negative 1. So it is negative 1, this is negative 2 and so on. So for all the ranges of x, you are actually getting single value. So let's see how we can actually draw the graph for the greatest integer function. Okay, <clears throat> let me just uh, clear this particular screen or I can keep it here itself and let's draw the graph. So here I am drawing the values of x. I should clear it actually, I need a space. Just a moment. Okay. So let me draw the axis first. So this is my x-axis. And this is my y-axis. Here I have the horizon and let us let me draw the points also. So this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and so on. This point is 0, then this point is negative 1, this point is negative 2, this point is negative 3 and so on. Let us also draw the uh, write the values on the y-axis. So this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. Similarly, on the negative y-axis, this value is negative 1, this value is negative 2, this value is negative 3. Okay. <clears throat> now, as we uh, discussed that if the values of x lies between 0 to 1, the value of the function will always be 0. So, this is applicable for all values of x. So, I am drawing an arrow. It means if you have a values of x between 0 to 1, the greatest integer will be equal to this dot 0. Similarly, if you have values between 1 and 2, the greatest integer will give you 1 for all these range. For 2 to 3, the greatest integer function will give you 2. From minus 1 to 0, again, the greatest integer will give you negative 1. And then from minus 2 to minus 1, it will give you negative 2. Then from minus 3 to minus 2, it will give you minus 3. So this is the graph for the greatest integer function. So this dot actually indicates the greatest integer value of x. So this is the basic concept behind the greatest integer function. Now let's discuss the least in, uh, fractional part of x. So what I am doing is that we can write the function x. If you have a x value, x number, that x can be written as the integer part and also the fractional part. So the fractional part actually gives the whatever be the decimal part you have. So if you are finding the fractional part, it is actually denoted by this small bracket. So if you write it like this, so what is the fractional part of 1.2? It is just 0 0.2. What is the fractional part of 3.7? It is just 0.7. Or if you find what is the fractional part of negative 2.7, this will be you have to add negative 3 here, so it will be 0.3 because we are calculating the uh, nearest least integer and then we are finding the fractional part. So fractional part is always positive and this is also the fractional part is always between 0 and 1. Okay, yeah. So now what I am doing is that we can write any number x as the summation of the greatest integer of x and the fractional part of x. Let me give you an example. Let's suppose x is 3.7. So what is the greatest integer of x? The greatest integer of x will be 3. And what is the fractional part of x? That will be just 0.7. So you can see 3 plus 0.7 is equal to 3.7. That means the x is always equal to the integer part of x, the greatest integer part of x and the fractional part of x. You can also see this for the negative number. If your x is negative 2.7, then your greatest integer of x will be negative 3. And the fractional part will be 0.3. And if you add negative 3 and 0.3, you will get negative 2.7. So this is the way to find the fractional part of any uh, particular given number. 
and you can see this is always in the range 0 to 1. So this was the basic concept behind the today's topic, the greatest integer function and the fractional part of the number. Now let's do some problems related to this and the problems will be little uh, tricky because we are going to discuss the limits, continuity and differentiability related to the functions of the greatest integer number. Okay. So let's write the first question. The first question is find all the points of discontinuity of the greatest integer function defined by fx equal to greatest integer of x. It is also given that the greatest integer is less than or equal to x. Okay, so let's do how we can actually find the limit. So for finding the continuity and discontinuity of the grid, uh, of any function, we actually find the left hand limit and the right hand limit at any given number. So let's suppose we are finding the discontinuity points. So first case, what we are doing, let's consider that we are finding the discontinuity at certain decimal point or some fractional number, not a integer, that is not an integer. So let's suppose x is some numbers c and where c is not an integer. So if c is not an integer, let's find the limit. First, we will find the left hand limit. So left hand limit will be limit x tending to c negative f of x or you can say limit x tending to c negative f of x is greatest integer of x. Now we know how to actually find such limits. What we can do, we can just write x is, belong, uh, x is tending to c negative. So you can write x as c minus some small number. So that uh, so some small number h where h is tending to 0. So this limit can be written as limit h tends to 0 greatest integer of x is c minus h now. Now you can see uh, we are actually subtracting some small fractional number from c and this is actually uh, going to give you a number uh, integer number that is less than c. Right. So this will give you a integer number that is less than C. So it will be something like uh, 1 minus C if you write C as 3.7. So this will always give you 3. So uh, I am writing that it is giving you the greatest integer of C. Now if you find the right hand limit, let's do the right hand limit also for this particular question. I am going to the next phase. So the right hand limit for this particular question is limit x tends to c positive f of x or you can write limit x tends to c positive greatest integer of x. Again we will substitute x as c plus some small number h where h is tending to 0. So the limit will become limit not x actually it will be h. So yeah so it will be limit s tends to 0 greatest integer of c plus h. Again as h is a, a very small number, so this will give you the greatest integer of c only. So you can see the greatest integer of c in both the cases will be the same because the left hand limit is also c is also equal to the greatest integer of c and the right hand limit is also greatest integer of c. Both the limits are same. So you can see the, fun the limit actually exists and also the value of the function at uh, x equal to c will be the greatest integer of c. That means the function is continuous when x is a fractional number or it is a non integer number. So limit exists or you can say the function is continuous for non integer values. Values of so we have checked that the function is continuous when the x is not an integer. Now let's check whether the limit or the function is continuous when the f of x is a or x is an integer value. So this is the second case when we are considering that c is an integer. So if c is an integer, we can find the left hand and right hand limits. So left hand limit will again be limit c or x tends to c negative f of x. You can further 
right it at limit x tends to c negative greatest integer of x remember c is an integer here and you can you will substitute x as c plus some h actually c, c minus h it should be because we are writing the left hand limit and then this can be written as limit h tends to 0 where h is a very small number so it is c minus h and add c is a integer number and you are subtracting some small number from this c that means it will be going to the another range means if the c is let's suppose 2 and this is one point here so if your c is 2 and you are subtracting some small number from this so it will go to the another region so you are in, the, in this particular region from 1 to 2 and if you are calculating the greatest integer it will give you 1 similarly if c is some number and you are subtracting from some small number from this it will always give you c minus 1 so this is the left hand limit Similarly, if you calculate the right hand limit for this particular function, so the right hand limit will be limit x tends to c positive f of x or you can say limit x tends to c positive greatest integer of x. Then we can substitute x as c plus h where limit where h tends to 0 and this x is c plus h. Now what we are doing? We are adding some small number h in c where c is already an integer point and we are adding something that means it will go, go to the another entry, uh, interval if c is here. So c plus 1 will be here and c minus 1 will be here. So this is c minus 1. Just a moment. Yeah. So what we are doing? We are adding some small number h to c. So we are going to this another interval. And if you are calculating the greatest integer, it will give you c itself. So the right hand limit is c and the left hand limit is c minus 1. So both the limits are not equal. And if two limits are not equal, that means the function is not continuous or the function is discontinuous. It is discontinuous for integer values of x and it is continuous for non-integer values of x. So it is discontinuous for integer values of x. Just a moment. Yeah. Okay. So thus we uh, we find that the discontinuity points are all the integer values of x are the discontinuity points and all the non-integer points are the continu uh, continuity points. Means it is continuous for all the fractional values but it is not continuous for all the integer values. Now let's try the another question. The next question is again related to the discontinuity only and it is slightly modified question. Here we are defining the function g of x as x minus greatest integer of x. So x is the real number, the actual number and also we are subtracting the greatest integer value from here. Now again we have to use the same concept that First we will see whether x is a non-integer number, then we will see whether x is an integer number and we will do the limits again. So okay, let's do it. So first part of this question, if x equal to c is not an integer, let's find the limit. I am finding first the left hand limit. So the left hand limit will be limit x tends to, this is c actually, not 0, yeah, c negative f of x or you can say limit x tends to c negative x, this is not a fractional part, so okay, x minus greatest integer of x. I am using a, a, a small bracket here. Okay, then we can uh, substitute x as c minus h, where h is, h is some small number. So the limit will become limit h tending to 0. And this is x will be replaced as c minus h in both the cases, also in the greatest integer part, this way. And we also already know from the previous concept that if this uh, c is not an integer, so this greatest integer will be equivalent to the greatest integer of c itself. So this will give you 
uh, h is tending to 0 so this will give you c minus greatest integer of c right and that we already know that any number can be written as the greatest integer number plus the fractional part of that number or if you subtract the greatest integer from x this will give you the fractional part so this is actually equivalent to the fractional part of x let's find the right hand limit now for the same question so the right hand limit will be limit x tends to c positive f of x or you can write it as limit x tends to c positive x minus greatest integer of x or you can further write it uh, we can actually substitute x as some c plus h or where we can write h tending to 0 this will be c plus h this will be c plus h for x minus greatest integer of c plus h again. So this is similar, right? So if h is tending to 0, this term is 0, this term is actually greatest integer of c. So this will give you c minus greatest integer of c or that is equal equivalent to the fractional part of c. So the right hand limit is the fractional part of c. And also the left hand limit is also the fractional part of c. That means the function is actually continuous for all values of x that are non-integer. So let me write the statement. So the function is continuous for non-integer values of x. This is non. Let me write it carefully. For non-integer values of x. Now let's check whether this discontinuity, this is discontinuous or continuous when x is an integer number. So, so let's do that part also. So what I am uh, considering for the second case is x equal to c is an integer. So let's find the left hand limit. So the left hand limit for this function will be limit x tends to c negative f of x or you can say limit x tends to c negative x minus greatest integer of x. Uh, let me, we can substitute x as c plus h again using the previous concept and this will be equivalent to limit h tends to 0 where h is a very small number c plus h minus greatest, integer, greatest integer of oh actually this is the left hand limit so i should not write c plus h i should actually write c minus h so this is a mistake here let me correct it so this is also c minus h right now if you find the greatest integer value so this particular first term will be uh, c only this term is c itself so you can write c minus this number and we have assumed that c is an integer here and if you are subtracting some small number so you are actually going little backward so you are going in this particular region so this re this is the reason where the c minus h will lie and if you are finding the greatest integer this will give you c minus 1 so this is c minus 1 let me write a bracket here so c and c can be cancelled out this is just 1 so this is the left hand limit left hand limit for c equals uh, x equal to c and integer we have the left hand limit as one let's find the right hand limit also for the same question just a moment yeah so if you find the right hand limit right hand limit will be limit x tends to c positive f of x or you can write limit x tends to c positive x minus greatest integer of x. Let's substitute uh, x as c plus h. This is the right hand limit c positive that's why I am writing c plus h. Previously it was c minus h. So the limit will be limit h tends to 0 x will be c plus h minus greatest integer of c plus h. 
So this is a very, uh, up till now it is fine, but now we have to carefully write C plus H greatest integer. So C is here and I am adding certain uh, small number H to C. So we are going to the another interval C, C to C plus one. So C, uh, this greatest integer lies in this particular range. So the value will be equal to C and this C plus H is also C. So this is C minus C and that is equal to zero. So our right hand limit is coming out to be zero and the left hand limit was one. That means when X is an integer, the limit, both the limits are different. So you can say the function is discontinuous. Function is discontinuous for integer values of X. Okay, this was the systematic answer for this as we, we have to write in the board exams or some exams where we have to write the complete steps. But if you have a optional exam where you have been given the options that the answer will be A, B, C, D, something like that. Then for those exams, these steps are not mandatory. You can actually write the answer very quickly by just seeing the graph that we draw here. You remember the graph here? So the graph is saying that, okay, let's do how we can actually use this graph. Okay, so if you see, if you have a value of X1, then you can see that the right hand limit will be lying on this particular curve on this line. So the right hand limit will lie on this line and the left hand limit will lie on this line. So the left hand limit is zero and the right hand limit is one. You can see the difference. So that's why if X is an integer, then the limits are always not equal. So the function is not continuous when the X is an integer value. Now let's check if X is a fractional number, then what will happen? So if X is a fractional number, let's suppose X is a fractional number between two and three. So you can see the right hand limit will lie here to the right of this particular line and the left hand limit will lie to the left of this particular line. And if X lies in, in any of these range, the value of the greatest integer will always be equal to two. That means if you have a value of X between the two numbers, two and three, it will always give you a, uh, same numbers, limits of red right hand limit and left hand limits will always be the same. That's why the function will be continuous. So this can all uh, easily be used, the graph can easily be used to solve such questions. So that is all for this today's class. Thank you. And if you like this video, please like this, share it with your friends and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.